welcome back, 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 howdy, greetings, how to start your own Formula One team, now listen, very, very looking forward to this, very looking forward to this, and to be honest, I even got my own team name on deck, actually I don't. Actually, I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't have my team on deck. But we are finished watching the video. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Amazing. Absolutely wonderful. Very, very looking forward to this video. Because we see the bad teams. HTP. Red Bull Race. Uh, not Red Bull Racing. Uh, Rich Energy. I'm sorry. I, I can go on. But <laughs> we know. So let's see how to start your own Formula 1 team. But before the video starts, don't forget to like the video and sub as well. Love you guys and girls. Let's get started. If I asked you what Bruce McLaren, Eddie Jordan, and Gene Haas all have in common, what would you say? Money. Well, their surnames are a bit of a giveaway. All three of these guys started their own Formula One teams completely from scratch. Chaz Racing. That's it. Simple as that. Chaz Racing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Coming in 2025, Chaz Racing. You heard it here first, Chaz Racing. Now, when it comes to starting your own Formula One team, there are two different ways you can go around it, and they are drastically different financially. One is to buy an existing team, which would include the factory, employees, and other facilities. Or you can start your own team completely from scratch, That's what we doing. which unsurprisingly is massively more expensive. But let's be honest, just buying an existing team is a bit boring. So let me show you how to start one from the ground up. Now, for anyone that knows anything about F1, money is the name of the game. Right. And the more you spend, the more successful you are. But for this hypothetical team, they would be competing at the back of the grid like most new F1 teams do. Now, for those billionaires out there watching that genuinely have the money to start their own team, Please don't take this video as a cue to do so. There's an old saying in motorsport, the quickest way to become a millionaire is to be a billionaire and start a Formula One team. So don't go into it expecting to get rich because chances are you'll be bankrupt instead. Right, well with that little disclaimer out of the way, let me show you how to start your own Formula One team from the ground up. Well, as you'd expect, it is quite a difficult and complicated process. So I've simplified it by splitting everything you need into four categories. Finances, so basically the money side of things. Capital, which are the various facilities and equipment. Labor, which is basically the employees of the team. And finally, operations, which is everything you need day to day, race to race. The logistics. Right, so without further ado, let's jump straight into the first and most important aspect, the finances. Well, I've said it 20 times already, but I will say it again. Without money, and I'm talking at least nine figures, you have zero hope of starting an F1 team. Let's look at Haas F1 for an example. For a team that's been squabbling at the rear end of the grid for a few years now, they spend approximately $150 million every year. Money is so crucial for their survival as a team that they were forced to sign this guy as one of their drivers. So you get the idea. Money is crucial. Hey, Baz's pen finished a lot of people up, man. Hey, everybody keep flaming my boy. You, if you guys do not know, we have, we have already checked out that video about why people don't like Baz's pen. Y'all need to hop off, my boy, man. Listen, listen. Listen, is he good? I mean, probably not. I mean, is he shit? I mean, <laughs> you can say that. Oh, man, hop off, my boy. You know what I mean? My man guy's feet wet. You no, know, he, you know, he, he's fun. He's finna, you know, he's finna go crazy next year. Now by crazy, I'm, I'm, I'm saying he's gonna perform better than what he did. You know what I mean? He, he's gonna, he's gonna perform way better than what he did. But let my man just ease up my boy. Ease up my boy, Mazatin. I'm sick but of it. How do you go about sorting out the checkbooks for an F1 team? 
250 firstly, million, you need though. initial investment, Damn. and this can either come out of your own pocket, providing you have tens, possibly hundreds of millions to spare, uh. or you can source individual investors to contribute to starting the team. However, due to the fact it's counterintuitive to make a profit in F1, it's not the best investment for people to make. But gathering together a serious amount of cash is only half the battle. You also need sponsors. As I explained in my Economics of F1 Sponsors video, they are crucial to right. keeping an F1 team afloat, seeing as they contribute to at least half a team's income. Just take a look at Eddie Jordan starting Jordan Grand Prix back in 1991. If he never secured that sponsor money from 7up, the team would have failed. But even if you do sort out both the hefty amount of cash and solid sponsors, as of the new Concord agreement this year, you will have to pay $200 million as a joining fee to Formula 1. Well, for argument's sake, let's say money isn't an issue. So what do you actually spend that money on to get the team up and running? Well, this brings me to capital, and I've split it into three groups. The first what one the is by- heck? Holy sh- God dang! Alright, maybe Chess Racing is not coming in 2025. Okay, but... Oh my god. Alright. We need some investments. ...or building the various facilities that you need. I'm talking a factory, wind tunnel, offices, race control, and if you're really splashing the cash, a private test track. Then you have to buy the various things to fill those facilities, such as computers and computer softwares, desks, chairs, tables, a canteen, etc, etc. But at this point, you may have a factory with desks and chairs, but there's no way you can build a car. Now, that's where the machinery and production equipment comes in. This consists of things like 3D printers, CNC machinery, and other heavy equipment used to produce the thousands of components that go into an F1 car and the amount of components you do produce in-house is up to you. Looking at Haas, they've been able to survive because they've bought a lot of components rather than building it themselves. Components such as the engine, gearbox, chassis, and all other listed parts under the regulations are bought from both Ferrari and Dallara. And this allows Haas to save millions rather than building the parts themselves, yeah. which incurs significant research and development costs. And so, if you are looking to cut some corners, I would recommend following a similar approach. Right, well, we have the money and the facilities, but unless you're planning to run the whole team by yourself, you need labour, or otherwise known as employees. Well, in a Formula 1 team, obviously the amount of employees depends heavily on the amount of money being put in. For example, at Mercedes, there are 1,400 people in total. Whereas at Haas, there are just under 250, according to some sources. 1,400 employees at Mercedes. 250 at Haas. Oh my god. God dang! <laughs> oh my god. Gosh, that's wild. That is wild. To be honest, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna cap to you guys, you guys know. We watch we watch this shit live together. I honestly never knew Hass was that small. I honestly didn't know they was that small. They don't even have five hundred employees, two hundred and fifty. I honestly did not know they was that small of a team. My god. No wonder they struggle. No wonder they struggle. Jesus. That's tough. That's tough. Horses. That's hard. But how are the employees broken down in terms of their roles? Well, I've split it into five categories. Technical roles, which are basically the people that design a lot of the parts on computer softwares such as CAD. Then once they design the component digitally, they send over the information to the people in operations roles. Now these guys are basically the ones that get their hands dirty actually manufacturing the components, whether it be by welding, operating a CNC machine, or managing the electronics. Then once the car is designed and built at the factory, it is sent off to the racetracks along with those working in trackside roles or race roles. This includes the strategists, pit crew, trackside engineers, photographers, 
All in all, there are around 50 to 75 people per team at any race weekend. Then there are the business roles, which are just as important for a Formula 1 team as they organise the day-to-day -day operations of the team. Business roles include those working in marketing, human resources, public relations, logistics, accounting, all those administrative roles that we don't really acknowledge. Then finally, we have the directors and the drivers. These are the public figures such as Toto Wolff and Lewis Hamilton that we know very well. So that's his breaking... name. Tot Toto Wolff. Toto Wolff. I mean, it's pretty, it's, it's pretty unique name. A very unique name. Down the director roles, you have a team boss, a technical director, commercial director, chief of aerodynamics, chief of R&D, chief designer, and then, of course, two phenomenal drivers. Hopefully. <laughs> all in all, it's a lot of people to I'm hire and it. pay. <laughs> now, finally, the last category to Poor think Russell. about when setting up a Formula 1 team is the operations. By this, I mean everything you need to allow the team to travel to every race and set up the various mobile facilities. This includes the freight costs to transport all the equipment to the races, be it by road, air or sea. Then you've got the actual mobile facilities such as the motorhome, pit wall, computers and other tech needed for trackside operations. And then you also have to factor in the travel costs for those 50 to 75 employees that work at the race weekend. Now, the actual logistics of a Formula 1 team is extremely complicated, so you will need to factor in for things going wrong every so often, be it a missed flight or a lost piece of freight. And so, there you have it. If you're wanting to start your own F1 team, those are all the things you need to think oh about. My God. And by watching this video, you will realise that it's no small feat by yeah, any measure. It ain't. <laughs> you will need a colossal amount of cash, state-of-the-art equipment, a few hundred employees, and a serious dose of stupidity to even get a team in the sport. The real drama and suffering begins when you actually begin racing. But I think showing you how to run a Formula 1 team will have to be saved for another video. You may need to speak to Toto about that one. Toto. Oh, so, Tio, Tio. what do you think? If you had a cool $350 million plus in the bank hanging around, would you dive into the world of Formula 1? I'd love to know what you think, so comment that down below. And as always, make sure to like, subscribe. Yeah, you guys let me know. Would y'all dabble in the F1 world? I don't care. I, I, I probably would. I probably would. I probably would. I probably would. Listen, I ain't going out as bad as, as you know, Rich Energy. I'll tell you that now. I ain't going out as bad as them, but definitely, definitely could. If I get, you know, everything set up, the team name, I got, you know, the facilities, you know, the logistics part, you know, obviously I got, you know, the car, stuff like that. I possibly would, you know what I mean? But you guys let me know if y'all would as well. Anyway, you guys don't get like this up. Come up, I got to start some reactions. See you guys later.